Welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's premier paranormal preparedness podcast. My name is Jordan Dahl. I am Nate Balding. I am Roger Norquist. Roger, we have a guest this week. We do. We are joined by Kristen from the Paranorm Girl podcast. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. And before welcome. we go too far, truly, welcome, by the way, uh, why don't you just tell us about your uh, show for the Pingos? Yeah, sure. So uh, Paranorm Girl podcast is uh, it's really boiled down to like a nuts and bolts education about the paranormal. Um, so I go by seasons, which is not usual for for most podcasts but each season i'll cover a different paranormal topic so for like the first season it was all shadow people so we went hat man old hag you know all the experiences the experts cool. that kind of thing and then uh you know i've done uh mandela effect last season was demons in possession Ooh. so yeah yeah so i just go really really deep each season um and all different aspects of it in order to try to understand fully understand the concept from a skeptical believer's standpoint um, to see, you know, what what the conclusion is, what it is that I think about it, what's my ultimate opinion about it. And then interspersed in there, I'll have some awesome guests on the show and uh, some experts in the field. And yeah, it's, it's basically it in a nutshell. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And they're slumming it with, <laughs> <laughs> with you strokes. guys. Yeah. Slumming it with the radar. Oh, this, is, this is great. I'm so glad to be on. Thank Where you. Where can they show. find you real quickly on the Twitter or on the on the YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm on uh, basically all the social media. So Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of them are at Paranorm Girl Pod. I've also got a website, ParanormGirlPod.com, and then youtube i think you just type in paranormal girl podcast and, yep. and it'll come right up we don't know how it works either on youtube but same thing with <laughs> yeah. us we're like i don't know just I search werewolf just... radar we're the only one <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they need to step up their game make it a little easier come on guys <laughs> heck yeah um i don't understand the youtube it's some sort of a it's some sort of a portal into other people's homes <laughs> and reviews, as I understand it. Unboxing. The unboxing yeah. of various ramens. That's what I'm there for. Unfortunately, the YouTube is always my last thought. I know it's important because it's a whole other audience that you should oh. want to reach. Like, it's this whole other right. subsect of society. Um, but it's always the last thought when I go to, the, okay, I'm going to update everything now. And then I'm like, oh. Totally. Too. Okay. Back there's when I, back there's when people I was... that watch podcasts. That, that's what we still don't understand. So we're, we're finally on there. Even now they're watching us. Uh, really also I, Thank you for the new everywhere. subscribers and Patreon members. Absolutely. Uh, back, when, back when I was playing hours and hours of EverQuest, I should have been doing hours and hours of opening boxes and recording them. I, I do feel... To be honest, I do feel, yeah. I do feel like you could, you could have done literally anything back then. And it would be like, like now you would be the largest goldfish swallowing channel on YouTube, making millions a year. You know, this guy, you got to see this guy, he breaks pencils in half. <laughs> I mean, the very first YouTube video, which is some dude at the zoo. Yeah. And now and he's a millionaire. Zero, immediately got millions of hits. Now he bought that zoo. Yeah, he bought a zoo. It was a really bad investment. Uh, his <laughs> thumb zoo. got taken by a chimpanzee. Yeah, but Ooh. the ghost he's making, they'll last forever. I like to think that it's like a YouTube zoo. Like every every exhibit is just a different YouTuber who's like trapped <laughs> behind a cage and he won't release them. <laughs> Yeah, that was anyway. a whole uh, whole new. Sorry, but final thought on the YouTube because that that came around mm -hmm. uh, when I was still in middle school or high school. Yeah, yeah, it was a whole new whole new frontier, whole new mm -hmm. world. So it was. I'm sure everybody was just blown away. Like that was the beginning, the beginning oh, of yeah. it all. You know, now we've got all these other video opportunities, and anybody they just can handed become, us. Mm -hmm. They just handed us the keys to the camera. The power. Yes, <laughs> yes. Totally. Here. You're like, you ever want to direct something bad? So you, Here you, think, go. you can make TV? There you, go. you think it's easy? Go By next. the way, you can also see my short film, 666 Avenue, on <laughs> Werewolf Radar's <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah, you can see a lot of old sketches with me in it, too. Me without a beard. Maybe that's the only place you can see me without a beard. Strangely enough, the only thing under there 
bunch of snakes. It's weird. It's true. Totally strange. Your chin, your chin is a passenger train for snakes. We've been saying exactly. <laughs> uh, today's episode of Werewolf Radar is brought to you by the Monstroco brand Hate Bladder, an external organ you can fill with hate instead of taking it out on your family. Easily excised, easily replaced once every two weeks. The Monstroco Hate Bladder. It doesn't really say what they do with the bladder, but there is, they send you an envelope and you're supposed to mail it back to them when it's full. <laughs> Squishy. Yeah, yeah. They, they say under no circumstances should you try to dispose of the hate bladder yourself. Um, but I think that means that there is some sort of powerful properties to the hate bladder. I think I'm gonna fill one up. I'm just gonna, t- I'm just gonna take an afternoon, watch OAN, <laughs> <laughs> and just, just fill it to the brim and then I'm going to plant it in the backyard and grow one of those screen trees you hear about oh, God. Oh, I hear about it. Tucker Carlson well, <laughs> that's what the fruit the way, is colloquially all the, called all the fruits look like little <laughs> little hate filled tuck tucks uh, and then you and then you take them off and you whip them up cars <laughs> <laughs> The Monstroco hate platter by Monstroco. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Good God. company making weird objects. Mm-hmm. Uh, this I'm not going to make it through this show. Oh my God. <laughs> this you'll, week, you'll in honor of you as a guest, show. Kristen, we were talking through the email and you mentioned the Honey Island Swamp Monster. I sure did. So we decided yeah. that we're going to delve into <clears throat> this creature plus some other Louisiana fun. H-I-S-M. Ooh. And yeah. I would like to start uh, this first segment on the Honey Island Swamp Monster with what the Mississippi Gulf Coast National Heritage says about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Is this, this is a, from... This is, is this from a newspaper? A no, this is from the Mississippi Gulf Coast Her- National Heritage Area, which is okay. a government website. Okay. Which cares about the history and I sure preservation of the swamps of our some of our southern states and they say this about the honey island swamp monster sneaking around the pearl river is the honey island swamp monster the monster is described as being seven feet tall with long gray hair and large yellow eyes the creature has a huge webbed feet and smells like putrefied trash local legend tells of a story tells the story of a tragic train wreck in the 20th century the train was carrying a was the train was carrying a traveling circus traveling along the pearl river emerging from the wreckage was a group of chimpanzees that escaped into the forest surrounding river surrounding the river the story implies that the honey island swamp monster is a direct descendant of these escaped chimps whoa some locals I'm, believe I'm that the swamp monster that we've gotten to circus trains twice in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Some locals believe the swamp monster is just a giant alligator that roams the banks of the Pearl River, but others aren't well. convinced. <laughs> I also have hours of operation for the honey swamp monster. (laughs) (laughs) Don't call them outside of the office hours. You won't get an answer. Which was the funnest website I found. There it is. Amazing. Wow. Not available. I love that little little shrimp banner, too. That's so funny. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) There is something really funny about listing listing the office hours for a swamp monster, and there are just none. You will none. never be able to get a hold. <laughs> like he nor, has an office. Nor are there admission prices. Yeah, we're not sure not if, they charge, if they charge an admission. <laughs> I, so it's so funny that you would, first of all, I, I guess I've never really heard the description of it put that way. I've heard, I've heard about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. I always kind of... Um, put it in the realm of like a, a swampy semi-aquatic bigfoot in my mind which is hear, pretty accurate to hear like the long gray fur and the big yellow eyes and the webbed feet I, conjures a much more kind of gangly 
like like bloodborne esque creature in my mind. That's it evolved from creepier. chimpanzees, crashed in the twentieth <laughs> century. Apparently, if you leave chimpanzees in the swamp long enough, they gr- they you grow get a monster. To- <laughs> so I hadn't I hadn't heard that origin story exactly. I've never heard I, that. I only I found had... that from Mississippi. Okay, Louisiana <laughs> does not agree on this origin story. No, no. Okay, the origin story. The other origin story I heard with the escaped circus monkeys was that it was the unholy union between one of them and one of the gators in the swamp and that's oh, uh, that's okay. why it looks a little sasquatchy plus the webbed feet yeah i also okay. have legends about pirates such as john lafitte and mm-hmm. perry oh. lamu lamu so it was an unholy union between the the chimps and pirates that's also and, fair and <laughs> yeah and a Ghost gator. of Native American Indians. Oh wow! Holy but that's just moly. kind of like the the American catch-all on any type of cryptid or monster. Right, like right. the yeah. Mothman yeah. falls under this too, to where like it could be an alien, it could be an un uh, uh, a mutated animal from the fire, not from the fireworks factory, from the TNT <laughs> factory. Yeah. It could also just be. A herring, a crane, or something like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could also be the, the curse crane. of Chief Cornstalk, which I forgot the proper name of him, so I went with the colonizer name, unfortunately. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the one you're gonna find if you go looking for it. Also, TNT can be a firework if you're <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're particularly a brave. So if for you, a little if bit, you're patriot enough for it. A little bit better uh, delve into the Honey Island Swamp Monster comes from Pearl River Ecotours.com. Mm. Just a short drive from New Orleans, Louisiana, there are many acres of swamp, swampland deep in the Honey Island Swamp. They are said to be as uncorrupted, primitive, and untouched by any man as anywhere by a man as anywhere in America. It is for this reason that some say it might actually be possible for a creature to live in these parts and go unnoticed by humans, or, well, almost unnoticed, they say, after an ellipses. So, the first documented sighting of the creature supposedly takes place in early August of 1963. Harlan Ford, a retired air traffic controller, and his friend, Billy Mills, came home from the swamp with an incredible story. The pair of veteran hunters claimed that while out in the swamps, they came across a large creature standing over the body of a dead boar. The Is creature. There a time you come back from the swamp and don't have a story, though? <laughs> <laughs> the creature. I feel like every trip into the swamp should get one. The, the swamp is a magical place, and there's, there's always a fun story, but the fun story doesn't always involve a huge, hairy creature over a dead boar. No. Sometimes yeah, some... it's just a dead boar with an alligator standing over it. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, if somebody comes back from the swamp and they don't have a story, they weren't at the swamp. They went to Dave and Buster's <laughs> and, they lied and they're lying to you. <laughs> the strange creature had apparently ripped the boar's throat out completely. <sighs> Harlan described the creature as being covered in dingy gray hair with long hair hanging from its head. The two estimated the creature came close to 400 pounds and stood about seven feet tall. The creature's enormous size and hair was frightening enough, but the amber colored eyes and horrible stench that reeked from the creature were the two things that stuck in both their minds. Well, Did that you ever is s- not a gangly cryptid? <laughs> See, the, 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 the yellow eyes, the yellow eyes especially sh- screams reptile to me. Reptile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. So, did the but then the hair takes it in the completely other direction. Yeah. However, yeah. I have heard stories about like, have you ever heard of uh, furry alligators? No. What? Yeah, that's that's a thing, and uh, people think it it might be like. Um, like alligators uh, nesting up in water with a certain kind of algae that then grows on their scales. Oh, yeah, because it yeah. seems it There's seems to be like reptile eyes for us. Oh there yeah, there you totally. go. There you go. You know what it reminds me of? Did anybody watch um, <laughs> The Witcher the series? No, Never Jordan. I'm it. getting on it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they they come across this monster a couple of times that looks like um, okay. The animal uh, is called an eye eye, 
You know the eye eye? Mm -hmm. Hit us with it. It, it's like a weird kind of possum looking fellow with a little sweet monkey face. But the monster in The Witcher is based on that animal and it's like a seven foot tall eye eye. And that's weirdly what I'm uh, what I'm pic picturing. The, the number seven comes up a lot in my numerology when we want to talk about Christianity. No, I'm joking about <laughs> <Okay>. that. <one. laughs> but oh, wow. like seven Definitely foot tall creatures, too. <laughs> yeah, like seven, seven foot tall creatures seem to be like that. Mm hmm like height to where like how tall was the creature it had to be like seven feet tall it's yeah, just like that right. height that's just right above normal human to where like anything above us is seven yeah. feet tall just well, that, outside like, of the range well i think that height that height was a guesstimation i think from yes, yes, harlan because harlan was pretty dang tall himself as i understand he was over six feet and he was like this thing was bigger than me taller than yeah. me yeah. yeah. So, because there's a bunch of other reports that'll that'll say it's even you know bigger than that, seven and a half feet tall. It's, I don't know how that uh, goes undetected though. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. The Unless it's well, the woods are dark. The swamp yeah, is mean, even darker. You know, it, that's what I keep having to go back to. It's standing in some shallows. So, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting it's got a, up. It's got a lampshade on its head, just in the corner, like yeah. nothing. <laughs> I'm a lamb. <laughs> I had another report from the 1980s, which I lost, but that's the internet and my computer that keeps resetting itself. It's going well now. Nice. So that was the first report of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Some reachers, of course, believe that the Honey Island Swamp Monster is related to Bigfoot. While the body size, while the body size and description is very similar, the tracks found in and around the Honey Island Swamp do not resemble tracks collected in the Pacific Northwest, as you've uh, discussed, Jordan. They're they're webbed. Yeah. They are four and sometimes three-toed tracks. Mm hmm. Much like tracks discovered in southwest Texas and parts of Florida. So it's a it's a cousin of the Sasquatch. Sure, I would, some sort I, mean, of I would think something that's become adapted to being in that, that swampy environment. Sort of aquatic yeah. subspecies. Yeah. And the 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 foot size is not as large, I think, as Bigfoot's, it says that the cast made by Harlan Ford were about 10 to 12 inches long, which truly is just larger human size. Right. Regular foot. Yeah, regular mm -hmm. foot. <laughs> regular mm -hmm. hair foot. Yeah. Uh, and they had three thin toes set next to each other and a fourth set back on the inside, hmm. rather like a thumb. Okay. Some more of a uh, that's definitely more reptilian. It is something different for sure. Um, where are we now? I also have some extra stuff because that's overall the honey, the honey island Bigfoot or honey island swamp monster How dare encounter. You. <laughs> uh, do you have any extra stuff you would like to add? Because I now have a song and the footage <laughs> of the honey island swamp monster. Oh, do you have the Ford footage? I do, would we I'll all like to I'd, watch it? I'd love to watch all that. All right, let's, let's pop this open then. Which window, I need another monitor. This is me, everyone knows about it. I have all 17 windows on one monitor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I don't think it's driving me insane. No, I, I think There's also a song that goes with this. The song is Honey Island Monster, written by Perry Ford. Nice. The nephew or son of Harlan Ford. It's the granddaughter's mm -hmm. Dian Dana Holyfield's uncle who oh. wrote the song. Yeah. Now, oh, I heard... The, the next time you're out to Honey Island, if you don't catch the Ford family singers... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's a bird. <laughs> <miles from town. laughs> the creature comes up about 145 in it, but the song is 230. Yeah, you got it. It's kind of a jam. <laughs> from a voodoo spell oh, it walks up right when it screams at night it's where it came from here. 
is all new information to me. <laughs> This slaps, you guys. Slaps. Seriously, this, this is kind of a jam, right? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Blanchard understood what Perry Ford was going for. I hope we get copyright claims so Charlie Blanchard can get his penny. <laughs> All right, it is coming up. They're almost at the realm of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. They'd seen him many a time as it worked in the trap the land. Late at night by dim firelight. That's a spider. I thought that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Standing in the shadow, working about out there. Big old spider. But this is not a spider. There we go. Oh. For those who just listened to the podcast, check out our YouTube. But overall, it was very Patterson Gimli like film. There was something upright Harry walking through. Just kind of taking a stroll. Just kind of taking a stroll, yeah. Yeah, we Here it is one more time for all of us to see again. Without the sound, despite it being awesome. Wow. And there's been other sightings. It's kind of been uncorroborated <coughs> as best I could find on. Wow. It looks it's kinda, enormous compared yeah, to the trees. Yeah, but it's kind of walking very, like, nonchalantly, you know? Just kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not even... <laughs> it, it, yeah, or are you guys shooting here? Sorry, I'm just going to score. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. <laughs> Got to get to the 7-Eleven. Um, amazing. Charlie Blanchard wrote that song. Who? Uh, Charlie nope. Blanchard. Well, he no? recorded it. Perry Ford wrote Ford. that song. That's right. Okay. Uh, Perry anyway, Ford, that's, that, uh, that song only has under 1,000 views. So if we could all just get that yeah. over 1,000. Who's Perry yeah. Ford, everybody? <laughs> Yeah. If I'm Who's Perry Ford? the radar uh, bump. And if it helps, I heard that Charlie Blanchard is the result of an unholy union between an alligator <laughs> and Perry Ford. So I guess that's now where I kind of want to take this discussion into the honey swamp island monster is that what could it possibly be? There's there's different reports on it being like a Bigfoot type creature. And then we have mm -hmm. reptilian attributes about it. Like it's hairy. It has sure. it has mammal mammalian like <laughs> fur. But we mm -hmm. have the web feet, and then possible, like, this could be a crocodile, I think, based on some of the, the carcasses that people find and blame on onto this creature. The yellow eyes. But then Jordan's also mentioned the hairy alligator. So all the bets are off. Alligator. And I throw one more wrench into this. Throw more wrenches. Some of the reports, a lot of the reports actually report a, an elongated snout. Which I think, I personally, I think they might be confusing it or, or mistaking it with the Rougarou, which mm -hmm. is more of a, a werewolf, interesting, right? yeah, creature. So, okay. but that is that is part of the whole description as well. Though I have heard the reports of more of a, a flat, you know, straightforward, more like a primate. That is a really interesting connection. I've never because I, I I'm a big I'm a big Rougarou head here. Mm -hmm. If I was if I was to pick a favorite southern cryptid, it would probably be that. And uh, I've never I've never thought it, never thought of that. The grunge, <laughs> the grunge is too new to my we're, lexicon we're, to, we're all, to we're all commit to. people at heart. <laughs> 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 Although there are some similarities to the Grunch, right? The Grunch is like yeah. kind of an albino it's sort of got ghostly. A, it's got sort of reptilian things going on. You know, it's uh, usually described similarly to a chupacabra. Do you know of the yeah. Grunch? I've never like, heard of the Grunch. What is that? Nate, take us to Grunch Town. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> DJ Grunch, spin that shit. <laughs> uh, it's, it's 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 a uh, a, a chupacabra esque cryptid. Uh, there's a there used to be a thing called Grunch Road. It's now called something else. Uh, it's I, f I forget which road it is, but it's outside of New Orleans, but not by a ton. Uh, it was like a f people used to spot at this former Lovers Lane that is now just a it's just a gross dirt road that's been all 
littered up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just, it's a weird, it steals small animals. Uh, nope. It hunts things in the swamp. Uh, it occasionally hunts people and claws yeah. of their cars and such. It's kind of described uh, as a, a pale, lanky, um, uh, well, it's, it's sort descent, of Bigfoot. theoretically descended from a bunch of uh, albino, a troop of albino freaks yeah. who were uh, mm-hmm. pushed into the swamp because the local citizenry uh, did, didn't didn't like their kind around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and through a, a, a series of generational incest birthed the Grunch, mm-hmm. a, a hellish grunt creature huh. that possibly huh. also came from Marie Laveau doing battle with a Satan doll. So yeah. <laughs> what what makes it what makes it akin to the chupacabra? What's the similarity? Uh, just it, people often just it, it's just the description is almost always chupacabra esque. Like oh, okay, okay. Yeah, kind of a oh. uh, hunched kind of over, mangy. Sometimes it's got little spikes on its back, that sort of thing. People All will right. talk about it uh, taking pets and kind of kind of chickens and Might stuff. Might be some mm-hmm. sanguination going on, exsanguination. Mm-hmm. Blood's powerful. Yeah. Stop Stop forcing things into the swamp, everybody. If you disagree with them, <laughs> you get in there, you get into the swamp, and you adapt. And I you found, become dangerous. I found the the other firsthand account of the Honey Island Swamp Monster that was in deep in my history, and then we can go to some more exciting stuff sure. of Louisiana and paranormal. So this report was from 1981, and mm-hmm. it is from a Jerry Brew, from, and it was truly from his friend Hubert, who wished to remain anonymous. The writer <laughs> said... Jerry immediately gave his name up. <laughs> I hope it was That's a fake name. I hope friend. it wasn't like the Hubert. worst Oops. journalist ever. Out hunting for deer, Hubert was perched atop an oak tree when he heard heavy sounds approaching from the woods behind him. Too afraid to move, he watched as a figure about eight feet tall and hairy from head to toe passed slowly below him, eventually disappearing further into the woods. Wow. Hubert retold the story and began clenching his teeth, breathing rapidly as if he was reliving the experience. Wow. There is also another time, 1974, where a wildlife photographer uh, had a similar incident. Sitting in the trees. Sitting in the trees, having a... Saw it go underneath. That's, I heard... (laughs) And that one is from NOLA.com. Curious Louisiana answers. Yeah, I mean, I get, first of all, I got to call out this wildlife photographer for sitting in a tree with a camera, presumably, and Dude, not re- photographing you- the Honey <laughs> Island swamp monster as it walks underneath you. I get, I get that you're scared, but come on, clicky clicky. All right, that one was <laughs> that one was a weird weird paragraph, firsthand account that should definitely have had more questions asked okay i'll grant you on that one i heard a a similar story about the mapinguari which is a south american cryptid that supposedly has a a, a mouth in its stomach and it's uh people have thought have theorized that it could be um some remaining megaphonic sloth or something but these people were sitting in a tree and they smelled this horrible stench they said it smelled like the forest itself uh just like times a million and then they saw it walk underneath them i think i think as far as what could the honey island swamp monster yes, be back I, to that I, I love that connection to the rougarou i've never heard that before and it, it's it seems like they could be talking about the same the same critter i think uh i mean there's always a chance that it's the hoax that somebody made it up to, yeah. to get people <laughs> in there always uh, there's, you know, guy in a costume, but it's too hot out there to be wearing gorilla costumes. Come on. Uh, there, I think, you know, in that kind of, in that kind of country, that's so thick and impenetrable like that, the idea and ever changing mm, the body and shit's always changing and Absolutely. dangerous, you know, yeah. 
and uh, I think that the the possibility of there being an undiscovered uh, bipedal hominid uh, is just as good there as it is in, say, somewhere like the Pacific Northwest, especially if it's the type of thing that is a lot smarter than we like to give it credit for. And instead of just lumbering around looking for grubs and stuff, it's actively trying to stay away from human populations. It is, I mean... The yellow eyes are very interesting. The mm-hmm. webbed feet is very interesting, but that's not, um, it's not out of the realm of possibility for a mammal. You know, beaver, beavers have webbed feet. Otters have webbed feet. Uh, I think, I think the idea of it being a mammal is more appealing to me just because of the reports and what and people are talking about. And some mammals have yellow eyes. Yeah, and yes, and notably, uh, chimpanzees can't fertilize alligator eggs. That's a thing. That would be <laughs> because a- <laughs> you won't let me spend the werewolf radar fortune on the science. <laughs> that would be go over my head. Go over my head. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we voted. We'll two talk to one. the radar directly. <laughs> it's too unholy. They just can't. <laughs> the union's too damn unholy. <laughs> um, but I mean. I, I think I think for my money, probably talking about uh, some kind of uh, either something that once existed there, an actual animal, or something that is that is still there lurking. A, ma- a mammal. I pick I, mammal. I choose I, mammal. I slide with that, but I have to go. I think mammalian reptile. I think they okay. existed past the past the end of the dinosaurs, and we have we got we got one. We got one in our grasps. In our grasps. <laughs> all right. Uh, what well, me, me next? We go with it, and then oh, we'll boy. end with Nate. All right. All right. Um, I hope I'm not the only one that's gonna say this, but I think it is. I'm, I'm gonna go with it's a Sasquatch variant. Because sure. uh, I yeah I'm I'm all down with this with the Sasquatch especially now I'm in the Pacific Northwest okay I'm, oh, yeah. I'm all in <laughs> yep. but, Sasquatch uh, is your favorite baseball team <laughs> so <laughs> I, I mean just uh, there there are variants all over the place like why why wouldn't there be this evolution of this particular it's it's you know down into this what 140 square acreage of swampland and that is where it resides people don't see these particular cryptids anywhere else so they're very confined to this space over time over the centuries if the native american and the cajun lore is accurate i mean we're talking centuries that people have been Mm -hmm. seeing this stuff and there are a lot more uh stories firsthand encounters and you'll you know you'll find a handful of them online um or whatever but i think that there is enough first-hand encounters there enough evidence enough of the same sure. descriptions of this thing i think it is there i think it is real but yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go paranormal with it, that it is is an, an evolution of uh the regular schmegular sasquatch yeah I, th- I think i'm right i'm right there with you yeah. this is swamp action bigfoot I, th- <laughs> swamp, <yeah. laughs> I, I and i think that's that's Part of the reason why is that it seems to be so elusive and that that's something that I personally believe about what people are seeing and reporting as Bigfoot is uh, it's it's much smarter than we think it is. So it's like it mm-hmm. it doesn't want to it doesn't want to be seen as bad as we want to see it. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Nathaniel. Oh, I think it's a guy in a suit. Okay, you're going to say it. But you say but, that about okay. No, the guy in the suit is a Bigfoot. Ooh. <laughs> so you're thinking like I, I big... think this is yeah, this is a Bigfoot that's trying something different out, just testing some waters, saying like, look, this is me now. I want to be a swamp foot. You know? <laughs> it's a Bigfoot in a swamp monster costume. Exactly. Yeah. I do. I love the idea. First of all, Honey Island sounds like it sounds like an old hobo tune. Like we're going to go to Honey Island where the rivers run with frosting. And it sounds like it would be like a big candy monster. (laughs) Which I would like to see. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It had something to do with the the honeybees that that were Mm. uh, very, I don't know. Well, and also the island. So also food source. If there's honey there, you know who loves honey? 
There you animals. Go. Yeah. Yep. It's true. But animals do love honey <laughs> of all types. <laughs> also, we all know we all know Winnie the Pooh is a secret Bigfoot. They love it <laughs> for sure. Oh my God! Have you seen that Winnie the Pooh horror movie that's coming out? <laughs> I'm into it. I'm, no. I don't want to watch it alone, but I'm into yeah. it. Winnie the Pooh just went public domain like last year. And so somebody made a movie called Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and him and Piglet yeah. are great, though. terrorizing the youth. Yeah, it looks oh, terrifying. I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, right. I'll watch that well, that's my segment on the Honey Island Monster. Uh, not really a deep dive of sorts that you would do on your show, but a nice, a nice I guess gandering at the subject a taste oh, of that honey that was awesome that was awesome taste Learned a few of things. the yeah. honey monster <laughs> <laughs> nate you got some more cajun flavor for us i do believe uh, yeah i uh, i went away from the cryptid side but i stuck around shreveport and was looking at some haunted stuff uh in the area uh, so i got a, a couple couple hauntings in C- caddo parish Caddo, mm. maybe the wrong way to say it. I'm not sure. But Caddo. There's no way to tell. There's no written language. I know. It's uh, it, It'd be impossible for me to say, look it up. <laughs> uh, so the first one is the uh, Caddo Parish Courthouse, which has been there for quite some time. Uh, one of one of the earlier uh, buildings in Shreveport. Uh, and it is extraordinarily haunted. Uh, oh. I found a, this is mostly from the website hauntedhouses.com, the Louisiana mm-hmm. section. There's a uh, part of this article that's history of their manifestations. Uh, so first thing you should know is that originally the Cattle Parish Courthouse was where they would, uh, they had their executions. Well, <laughs> that's, I, a, so, good, that's, that's a, a good way, way to haunt get a ghosts. place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do it uh, all on site here. <laughs> According to uh, the article, sometimes when convicted criminals are executed, they may be too afraid to go to the other side or think their punishment was unfair or suffer from a bad hanging, and they might decide to stay at the place where they underwent capital punishment. Uh, and then it goes on to say about eight people were hung on this particular death row. And when they say hung, um, like, apparently the way they did it is they literally just hung you. It's an eight-story tall building. They just hung your ass by pushing you off the top Holy inside shit. the building. Whoa. Hanging. Wow. Uh, the first one, this guy sounds like a really awful person. His, uh, <laughs> he went by the Butterfly Man. That's what they called him. All right. Uh, Daniel Bryan Bunce Napy was a criminally insane man with horrible impulses who hopped off the train from Georgia and moved into the hobo jungle during the Depression in the early 1930s. To eke out some money and perhaps to look for victims, he went door to door selling plastic butterflies he made himself. Now there's two stories they say about how Daniel got hold of young Maggie Mae Griffin, the last person to die by his hand. Both of them are equally bad, and I think you can figure out what happened. He went door to door selling butterflies. He saw a child, and then he stole that child and mm-hmm. took her to the woods and murdered her. And uh, was pretty uh immediately captured apparently uh he was also suspected of similar doing a committing a similar murder of uh mary fagan in georgia and his own stepson ligon jackson uh i think he was probably like holding the knife when they found him basically he was walking around town covered in blood it was just like hey i think that's the guy yeah Uh, so it says a, a vigilante group arrived to take him and hang him, uh, stopped by the sheriff, his men, tear gas, and the National Guard. So apparently quite a few people came to hang this guy. Wow. And, and tear gassing like, angry people is just something cops have always been doing. <laughs> they, they sure. love it. It's their favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the jury took only 30 minutes to condemn him, condemn him to death. Uh, and in 1932, he was hung from that eighth floor until he died. So it wasn't even like a good neck breaking hanging. He just oh, like the ropes too there. small. Shit, like come on, government. Ooh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dan, he was he was the last person to be hung, and then the eighth floor was just sealed off. What? So that right. thing's just filled with bad vibes. Good lord, that is like that. If you wrote down the steps to haunt a place, 
Like, <laughs> That's... like hang a bunch of people up there, <laughs> seal it off. When it gets too scary up there, just lock the door but, and walk know, away. Let it simmer for 20 years and <laughs> open the door again. Simmer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Ghost yeah. pressure cooker. <laughs> Leave it up with a little mirror claw. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's terrible. Uh, that's... What a terrible guy. Terrible yeah. story, but terrible. I can't wait for the terrible ghost you're going to scare me with now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he's he's stuck around, but, you know, there's also, we should mention, the death penalty didn't stop when they boarded up the eighth floor. It continued as there was a seventh floor electric <laughs> chair set up. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, they just mo- was... they just fucking moved it down to the seventh floor. <laughs> yeah, they moved down one floor. <laughs> you guys are gonna run method. out of floors. <laughs> uh, wow. Then they eventually moved the death row to a another Louisiana maximum prison, uh, rather than doing them locally in the courthouse. Uh, says Dr. I mean, Willis Butler. Good for them for cutting out the middleman for a short while, I guess. Oh, yeah, but... no. Yeah, literally, so. first floor, you check in. Second floor, you get convicted. Third through eighth floor, different yeah. ways you could die. <laughs> Push Basically, Dante's yeah. Inferno, <laughs> but yeah. upwards. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so all all the spirits apparently haunt this place. Uh, there's also a few that th- didn't get killed there. They just they just hang out. Uh, Doctor Willis Butler was probably the longest serving Caddo Parish coroner from 1916 to 1961. Then he came back from 73 to 76 because he loved it. Uh, they he loved. He say, missed. He missed the action. They literally say that he loved being in that building and he loved his work. Wow. Uh, there's also a spirit of a law enforcement deputy who makes his presence on the fourth floor. Uh, and it goes on to say, sometimes when a person dies at the hands of another, they refuse to go to the other side. He continues the spirit in this world. Seems like a weird non sequitur because they don't talk about that happening at all, except for the execution. That's one of those death and ghost lines that you just kind of flavor into your article to make it like yeah. just a little bit more like ghostly. You say it with absolute scientific conviction. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's the uh, thing the- about dying. Yeah. <laughs> you get a choice if you want to stay in the asylum where you were executed or yeah. when you die you will see three levers yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is kind of fun much like the uh, the daily Honey Island swamp uh, itinerary there are several different times you can go here just depending on which kind of haunting you want to experience. Uh, oh, nice. So the hours of operation. <laughs> they, oh, they've nice. got hours of operation. The uh, have daytime hours. The daytime What's the admission hauntings? and do students get a discount? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> I think the, the admission is you have to have committed a crime, and that's never gone over well in this courthouse. Yeah, there's an AARP uh, discount, <laughs> and if you go to if you go to school in the area, <laughs> you can get in uh, for just a- jaywalking. You don't yeah. have to kill anyone. Yeah, they do have a. They've got it broken down into daytime hauntings and evening hauntings. Daytimes, you can go to the fourth floor if you want to meet Secretary Secretary Sharon Porter, who worked on the fourth floor. That sounds is, nice. Oh, yes, I do want to meet her. <laughs> that is, that's a she, nice uh, name. Yeah. yeah, she says that uh, people but who work to on be the fair, floor, so is the butterfly man. <laughs> that's a nice name. <laughs> Uh, so the fourth guy. floor, you can, you could. There's just various people that I guess worked at the office. Uh, you, they're still around. They, there's unseen presences pushing people. Uh, there's cold winds that just the usual kind of ghosty stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, you can go to the seventh and eighth floors, and just meet executed prisoners. Ugh. Uh, during the evening hours, janitors who clean during the evening hours are treated to auditory sounds coming from the top floor. Talking, mm. yells, and moans from executions and hangings are rather loud and can't be missed. Objects move by themselves, un- unexplained cold spots. Uh, however, on the lower floors, like the fourth floor, all that happens is cleaning buckets and mops get moved around. Oh, that's oh, not okay. too bad. They're no, helping. Almost, yeah, almost yeah. helpful. Yeah. This is all that stuff that, like... <clears throat> you fear when you move into an older building yeah or at least i do to where like what are the chances that this whole building's haunted and i'm gonna have to deal with weird disembodied moans from an <laughs> executed person when this was a courthouse now would you put up with that 
if it meant that every so often a, a ghost mops the kitchen. I'd put up with it if you gave me $50 <laughs> off my rent. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Do you, do you automatically think, I mean, is that a, a general consensus that all old buildings or houses are haunted, have something going on? I moved into this building that I'm into right now with my lady. And for the first, like when we were painting it and all that, we just left as much dust as possible just to make sure there weren't mysterious footsteps to like indicate there's a ghost or something. We were like, well, oh. if there was a ghost, we'll see their footsteps. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind I'm kind of like that, too. Like no matter where I'm moving in, it, it can be a really new building. I'm I'm still like. I have to give it like two or three weeks to be like, you know, just I'm screening the dreams. I'm making, <laughs> I'm, I'm making sure that all noises are accounted for. And I'm not I'm not entirely anti haunting. I've lived in some haunted houses that were were uh, doable, so to speak. But I, it's definitely the first few weeks when I move into a place. I just it's just yeah, I think it's safer to assume that it is haunted. Yeah. And then go from there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can't it's help but surprise. have the uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I just you're can't good. help you're... but have that idea. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I, I think that that happened because I've been here at my new place for about three or four days. And, and the first mm -hmm. couple of nights, like you said, you know, the, the dreams kick up and you're like, OK, and you know, yeah. you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, did I see something? But at yeah. a certain point, I think I, I grow into comfort with a place because it's either like, sure. look, ghosts put up or shut up because I'm, you know, right. I, I plan. <laughs> right, right. I, I'm, I'm also kind of of the opinion that it's like if, if, if you do have a ghost, you know, it's like any other roommate. We can yeah. either get along long or we or we can have a bad time and i'm kind of just like hey we can get along you know i'll I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll work around your stuff i won't if i find a screaming skull in the fridge i won't eat it that's your leftovers it does yeah. seem hey, to be that's what you... i put up a chore wheel because it looks <laughs> like you did it does seem to be that's what ghosts want except for those one ghost that are actually demons when you do give it anything now it's more powerful and right. then you start bleeding in your nightmares and then bleeding oh, that through your eyes dance. yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, the old man. Anyway, Monstroco's got a product for it. <laughs> We're coming up on Dream uh, 50 as well. <laughs> Monstroco eye band-aids. <laughs> uh, there's another fun haunted area in, in the Caddo Parish near Shreveport. Uh, it's basically, it's, they, they call it the Ellerby Road School at this point. However, uh, when it oh. started, it was the George Washington Carver Primary School. Uh, which is, if you're looking for it, that's the name it'll be under, but it's out on Ellerby Road. I guess that uh, is just like a, it's a, a super out of the way kind of rural area. Uh, the school was started during segregation. So this was kind of where they were like, well, if we have to give a school to the black kids, we're going to put them over there. And then, of course, gave no funding to it. Uh, so it just ended up getting, it, it slowly just became this a, a, a worse and worse school until they closed it down uh, in 73. Uh, however, later the in 81, the Baptist Tabernacle leased the old school as a satellite campus for the Louisiana Baptist University, uh, a place where full-time Baptist ministers could complete theological degrees without leaving their pastorates. Uh, and they say, perhaps through the edifice's secluded location, uh, the campus again struggled to attract students, also possibly because the Baptist Christian College to this day has never re uh, received or retained its accreditation. Nice. Oh. Going the so, Trump University way yeah. with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that kind of that came and went. Uh that for a while. However, uh, it says that the little old school on Ellerby Road lay abandoned and forgotten as time steadily marched on. Mm -hmm. Less than a decade later, rumors would sprout up about the closure of the school. The abandoned edifice bore signs of a fire in what was once the elementary school's gymnasium and auditorium, and the local rumor mills soon provided an answer. Ooh. According to the scuttlebutt, during the edifice's latter years as a primary school, a janitor named Quentin Gimple began molesting children attending classes there. Oh. Eventually, students went missing, and the authorities were growing restless to try and find the culprit. Uh, worried about losing more potential students as fearful parents pulled their children out in droves, the Cattle Parish School Board tried to hush it all up. Boy. While the yeah, just because firing is, people and holding them account. Anyway, this is f this is full Freddy Krueger. Like, it is oh, very oh, Freddy. It ends 
in the exact same way. He okay. was uh, it's Where- fading. You got to get that dream coagulant in the eye, Band-Aids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, apparently they, uh, they they didn't even fire the guy. They just were like, let's not tell anybody that we know about him. So he stayed there, continued to do fucked up stuff. He grew less mentally stable as he felt the noose of justice tightening around his neck. That's their words, not mine. Until one day he took several of the children he'd recently abducted, placed them in the auditorium, and set the place on fire. Oh, wow. Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah. It yeah. says that he was never heard from again. Uh, so either they be- it's believed he either burned along with the children or wow. he escaped to go somewhere else and do more crazy, insane shit. But, uh, I-, I think more likely he just burned to death with them. Uh, wow. Students began to complain of feeling fearful or severely depressed while attending courses at George Washington Carver Primary School. They told their parents they could hear strange noises and eerie laughter. Uh, eventually, the parents began sending their school, their children to school in other locations in the parish, and a number of students attending plunged dramatically. Uh, they thought that desegregation might bring in a bunch of uh, other students. It did not. Uh, that's eventually the Baptists moved in. They also complained about hearing weird sounds and stuff in the night. Uh, it says not even the prayers or psalms of the holy men attending courses there could quiet the restless spirits. And eventually the, ta- the tabernacle moved out, although that seems probably to be more that they weren't a real school. Uh, there's also a water tower on the property, and those that are brave enough to climb the rusted ladder, this is insane, can see the reflection of the day they die. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 like, what? It's, I, it's a, a like, throwaway like the- extra. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can yeah. you can see yourself dying when you're supposed to die. Apparently. Right. Like, like in the water, see. in the in the reflection I, of the water, like you're looking in the tank. That's mm. that's you, my guess. They uh, like it's you not, look, it's look not in the re- very well. Like you look in the reflection and you'll you see no, yourself you'll see, dying. You'll see congestive Ooh. heart failure yeah. sneaking up behind you. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> or, or, like, or maybe you just see how you'll look on the day you die. Yikes. I'd rather mm. I'd rather not, I think. I, I, I want that as I a want surprise, it to be a too. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look in there and you just have face tattoos. Oh no. <laughs> it, it can tell Why you I... more than just the day you're gonna die. It can tell you yeah. some other things. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to see the face yeah. tattoos, but continue to get the face tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do absolutely nothing to change this future. I was told the future from a puddle. I will follow yeah. that puddle's words. I'll follow the word of the puddle. <laughs> <laughs> I Yikes. trust the augers of the water tower. Yeah, don't go uh, up there. Don't go up there, folks. I was going to yeah. say, go up there, folks. Send us a picture of the day you're going to die. Uh, Send us a picture I mean, of the reflection. <laughs> People do. Or, it's a it's a pretty it's a it's a hot spot for people in the area to come and, you know, explore around. Ghost hunters have been out there a handful of times, spiritualists and mediums and such. Uh, stories persist oh. of ghostly children still attending courses for some reason. Because school's oh, important. I think being burned to Bummer. death would be a get out of school forever card. But no, it's like Real. residual or something. <laughs> it would have to be. I hope. It's possible. Yeah. yeah, it's probably. Yeah. Uh, people have reported hearing school bells, uh, children screaming in pain or crying for their mothers, and oh, crazed right. maniacal laughter. Mm. Uh, and some people feel just an overbearing presence or being touched wow. by invisible hands. So terrifying. Yeah. The usual haunting stuff. Dang. Well, Louisiana Kato sounds Parish. fun. We've really made it sound like a great place. <laughs> it's it's really yeah. great. You, you're you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Save it's, the best one for not, last there, yeah. Nate. Jeez. It's, yeah. It's not all it's it's not all swamp monsters and invisible hands, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get, a, you is, get a, a, a a crab boil here and there. It is always uh, like hauntings and like weird leftover energy from a really bad time. And 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 yeah. the the- I think the theory is that like you know, p- powerful emotion will leave sure. some sort of a some sort of a mark on space time mm-hmm. or whatever the phlogiston of reality. That and what's more powerful is. psychically than like a deep traumatic event? Yeah. Sure, but I would love to hear about just like 
like, man, I went to that old haunted Six Flags and every ghost was having the time of their mm-hmm. lives. They had <laughs> such a day. I heard people having a great time on the roller coaster every once in a while. A ghost would cry out, man, these funnel cakes rule. <laughs> <laughs> We're never going to die. <laughs> Is that to say that, that there's no uh, emotion extreme enough, like like fear, like extreme Maybe. anger? Like, uh, is there no... No, I disagree. I think there is. Version? Because there, I think there are happy versions of that to where there's many reports of ghosts doing somewhat pleasant things. And, they're, and mm-hmm. I think the ghosts are in their, sure. uh, in their like, alive head to where like, the ghost will like set things in the proper order and how they would like it sure, like i think okay. that's a positive thing or like, like i mean i feel like that's the ghost being annoyed though <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah uh annoyance is or another like pleasant flowerly smells going around or something yeah. like that or, yeah. or you hear about like the like the owner of the hotel still walks these halls because they really love this place or something yes yeah sure okay caretaker right, ghost enough. stuff mm-hmm. yeah or the or the coroner that loved his job taking apart bodies so much in the courthouse that he just Jason, keeps coming back. Jason in the bunker says the Tivoli has such a presence. I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, the Tivoli. Supposed to be uh, very haunted. Metropolitan State College of Denver. There's an old uh, an old brewery and all of the old kind of workings in the basement there still. There's a uh, there's supposed to be some some spectral. Yeah. Doings. When I worked there, people talked about ghosts being around, uh, yeah. but I, I never experienced anything except for, you know, there were a couple of weird janitors that would show up with like, like one time a guy showed up with a jar full of brown recluse spiders and was like, what are okay. you doing? <laughs> 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 well, I'm selling spider milk. <laughs> The Spider Man. My girlfriend worked at <laughs> yeah. the Tivoli in the food court, and she did say there are some weird things when you're closing up, like at 10, 11 at night. There's some, there's some weird stuff, but she always there, just assumed it's where this is a public college. There was people be around. A room in the uh, in the Tivoli because I used to have uh, a really early class, and then I had a free period before my next class, and so I would try to sleep. And then there was a room in the Tivoli where I couldn't sleep because every time I'd start to fall asleep, I would have really weird, upsetting dreams uh, that all kind of took place in that room. And then when I started going to a different room, it wasn't a problem. Oh, well. Frightening, but way to fix that problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think that does it for another episode of Werewolf Radar, y'all. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for listening. Thank you so much to Kristen from Paran- the Paranormal yeah. Girl podcast. Uh, yeah, thank you out. guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on. This was awesome. For coming and kicking it, talking about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Send some favorite. five-star reviews her way, please. Absolutely. Oh, we well, thank, we thank know you. you got those stars. Throw those stars out. You're, what are you saving them for? Uh <laughs> Uh, shout out to Chuck from Snappy Little Numbers for our intro and outro song. And uh, if you really like what we do, go over to patreon.com forward slash werewolf radar and uh, sign up for our Patreon services. We have uh, additional content every week. We have some merch. We have, Roger, what else do we have? Uh, interviews from filmmakers and paranormal researchers featured in the 14 film festival art from you fiction from me nudes from nate we also have a twitch.com or no twitch.tv dot tv that's slash trips. werewolf underscore radar yeah. radar where you can see us play D every monday random mm-hmm. days see me play weird paranormal adventure games right now shadow of the tomb raider we're dealing with the pish taku Ooh. We're, oh, really? Yeah, that's the uh, monster in there. They call him the, the Yashal is their proper name, but the monster like. they're symbolizing are, is the Pishtaku. Wow, crazy. That That's like a fat vampire, right? Fat. Oh, they they go after the human stuffs. They want, they want all of that frosting, all of that, all that secret frosting we're hiding under the skin. Um, I, uh, I was just listening to, I actually signed up for... Um, do you guys know the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cult, Jordan. Stop it. Do you guys know the podcast Spooked? 
I don't think so. Well, I do. It's now. like a it's like a subscription. You have to pay a subscription, and I stopped listening because I was like, I'm not paying a subscription to this. Uh, and then on this road trip, I was like, I will pay a subscription <laughs> for this. And uh, it's terrifying. I uh, I honestly probably shouldn't have listened to so many of them, but that's my recommendation for the week is check out Spooked. Check it's out Spooked, terrifying. everyone. Check out um, Paranorm Girl I, podcast. I have to go to Paranorm Girl, obviously. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Check Absolutely. out us, an old episode. Just pick a random old episode. Get into it. Yeah, Great. Like the brunch one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, learn about the brunch. And... Uh, <laughs> And t- until next time, Kristen, we're going to do our sign-off line, which is Punch the Sky, Spaceman Joe, on the count of three. Until next time, as always, one, two, three. Punch, punch the, the Sky, sky Spaceman space space Joe. That was perfect. perfect. Nailed it. Sound designed by Blue Blanket Sound. Contact them at hello at blueblanketsound.com or www.blueblanketsound.com.